She's the senior political consultant for the Ben Crump Law Firm, also the host of the podcast Straight No Chaser. So, Tessin, thanks for joining us. And um, we will keep it real tonight because you are concerned about what we're not discussing in this trial. Explain. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. You know, I think there is a, a spiritual uh, message that we're missing. When you look at the fact that ages from 9 to 60, male and female that bear witness to this. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of the many generations that have bared witness to the brutality uh, that has been put upon black folks uh, over the last two or 300 years. I think about if you are a person of faith, I think about the ram in the bush. And I think about that story mm -hmm. and how the Lord said that it will send you everything that you need. And so when we look at the witnesses, I look at them as rams in the bush. If I had time to preach, I would preach a sermon called the bystanders because they were there for a reason. And the old folks say that you'll understand by and by. And it's important that America starts to get some understanding or there will continue to be karma in this country. Everything that we need is there. The MMA fighter, he testifies to the type of assault. We had the 911 operator that called the police on the police. We had the elder, the children, all ages, male and female, and black and white. So what does that tell us? That tells us that everything that we need is there for witnesses, and there is no excuse for this jury not to convict Derek Chauvin. And if they do not, there will be consequences. A lot of the viewers, you just shared a viewer that said that it's hard for them to watch the video. And what I tell people is this, and this is one of my concerns. One of the jurors said that they never saw the video. And so I am glad to see the video played over and over and over and over. It is not for us at home. This is not about us to be selfish enough to be concerned about how we feel because George is resting now. I've been working with the George Floyd family for the last year, and they understand that George is resting. Let us continue to play this video so that it can sit on Derek's conscience, so that it can sit on the jurors' conscious. Because when we have jurors that say, you know what, I've never seen the video, 20 years old, one of the jurors that never saw the video, that is a concern. So we have to understand that it is, yeah. it is not about us at home and what makes us uncomfortable, but it is the job to make the jurors and Derek as uncomfortable as we can possibly make them, and that is by showing that video over and over. So my concerns are with the jurors who have said they have, some of them have not seen the video. My concern is with uh, a few of the jurors who identified themselves as as multiracial that concerns me uh, because it doesn't give us an idea of the lens that they are you know looking at this situation and so we have to remember it is still 12 jurors yeah. that make this decision not us at home not the judge and not the prosecutor and that is my concern yeah when you talk about that heartbreaking gruesome video there's so much of it but I'm reminded as you speak of Emmett Till's mother and demanding to have that casket be open to show what had been done to her little boy. Um, context is everything. George Floyd is gone. George Floyd is not the man on trial. Derek Chauvin is. Why have we not heard more about Chauvin's record? 19 complaints, I believe, of excessive force. Why not more? Absolutely. And we're hoping that some of that uh, will be admitted uh, into court. Uh, and I don't know if that will happen. So it is very important to us in the court of public opinion that we continue uh, to talk about how, yes, Derek Chauvin had 18 different complaints. George was his 19th complaint in a 19 career, 19 year career. So no telling Sharon who we don't know about, how many others were out there that did not uh, speak up. We just saw a, a juror testify today saying that he deleted the tape because he didn't even want to be bothered with the police. So that is the type of behavior that we have in our communities. So it is so many more uh, that we don't know about. I worked on the Oklahoma City House call case and the women that were there, the 13 women uh, that actually uh, accused Officer Housecloth of rape, they were just a small group, and even all of them were still not believed. So we know uh, that this is something that our community is accustomed to. You see the young, uh, the young witness saying, you know, I was afraid of the police. You see the 60-year-old saying, I was afraid of the police. When is America going to atone for what has been happening to our community over the last week. We're not talking about just the last year since 2020 or even the last 10 years. I'm talking about the last several hundred years. The time is now, Sharon. And this is just a matter of America, not just 
righting the wrong in this case, but also continuing to push the just the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, also in Texas, the George Floyd Act, so many other legislative policies that we must put in place to one, make sure that we have qualified immunity so that officers can be mm -hmm. held accountable and not the citizens of, of a city when they screw up, and, and two, making sure that they can't go get another job like Eric Gardner's uh, police officer mm -hmm. that murdered him is able to even have the audacity to apply for a job. Those are the things that we have to correct so to avoid a possible George Floyd in the future. Yeah, nine minutes, 29 seconds. It is something that we have not gotten so personal with in America before. In that regard, this death is it. But I pose it back to you because we have been here before, Teslin. You mentioned Eric Garter, you mentioned so many others. We've been here before. Why is this the case, this monumental case that will get us beyond, that will get us justice? Yeah, I, th I think that this case, uh, it, it symbolizes something very different. You know, we have been here before. We know that we have a history of uh, whether we're talking about mass incarceration, slavery, uh, Jim Crow. Uh, we know that there has been constant uh, abuse uh, by those uh, in authority. But I do think that there is some significance to this happening in 2020. 2020, I believe, is uh, the opportunity for you to see things very clear. And there are a lot of us in America uh, that just have not uh, been introduced to this. Because this video was nine minutes long, it allowed every minute to go by to show the disregard for human life, where in a lot of the previous cases, things went really fast. Even in Eric Garner's case, things went really fast. We know that they murdered Eric Garner, mm -hmm. but even for the ones, Sharon, that are desperately looking for a way out of this, that are desperately looking for some type of defense, yeah. this is just simply a defense, uh, something that is simply impossible to defend. Uh, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, uh, the defense attorney, it, his his defense is laughable almost, you know, blaming in on the bystanders yeah. he he's afraid of a nine-year-old girl he's afraid of a 18 year old girl what could they possibly have done to a man with a badge and a gun so I, what i will say is this i don't know if this yeah. will be the case that we will get justice but i do believe that this is the case that will be the final warning for america we have now moved from the stage of talking and talking and talking to now mm -hmm. we will continue uh, to see more devastation in our communities and on this land until the, until there is justice. And I just believe that. And that is not me inciting violence or hoping for violence. That's simply just telling you like it is. The, the days are over for continuing to yeah. play this game over and over. Yeah. This generation is up and woke and on the streets and will continue to be there until justice is served. And we are where we are. Teslin Figaro, senior political consultant for the Ben Crump Law Firm. Um, we appreciate you. I hope you'll join us again. Um, the passion, um, it's palpable as well. Thank you, Teslin. We appreciate it. Uh, coming up